Hey folks, you know, today people often will say things just aren't made the same way they used to be. And this comes up a lot, especially when you're talking about Filson's old products versus their new products. And a lot of that stems from their ownership history. And I really wanted to take a second to kind of examine that and do a little comparison video because for all the review videos out there for Filson products, there's not really any, as far as I could tell, that are doing a comparison between Filson from different periods. And I wanted to take a look, because of some of the items I have, at you know new Filson versus old Filson. Is old Filson the champ? Or is it new Filson? So grab a cup of coffee, sit back, and I hope you enjoy the video. This is the piece that kind of started it all for me. Uh, this was the wool cap that I bought in 2014 at the now closed Minneapolis store uh, when I didn't have enough money to buy anything else. Um, the next thing I got was this green tin cloth duffel that I absolutely love. My spirit animal, this Mackinac Cruiser from 2019. This short line denim cruiser that I got at the Seattle flagship store this past year. This gray and black plaid 1970s vest. This brown 2010 Mackinac vest. This medium twill field bag that I use as a camera bag. Um, this was made in 2017. And then this uh, most recent edition, which is this Filson 257 original briefcase. Filson's ownership history can be broken down into five time periods. From 1897 to 1970, the family owned the company. From 1970 to 1981, the first outside owner joined in. From 1981 to 2005, Stan Coles, the ski wear entrepreneur, expands Filson to almost 250 products. In 2005, Coles sells a majority ownership to Brentwood Associates, the private equity firm. In 2012, Brentwood Associates sells their ownership of Filson to Bedrock Manufacturing, the creators and owners of Shinola and Fossil. So let's take a second and talk about Mackinac wool and where they source it from. Um, Filson's been sourcing their Mackinac wool largely from Pendleton Woolen Mills for decades. Um, you know, they're both Pacific Northwest companies. So it only makes sense that from a supply chain standpoint, they were sourcing just down the road in Oregon. This 2010 Brentwood Associates era Mackinac wool vest in brown, I purchased secondhand. You know, Mackinac wool is one of those fabrics. It's nice that you can just dry clean it. It holds up really well. This thing being 13 years old had virtually no wear on it, and I intend to wear it for you know, many years to come. Style-wise and stitching-wise, it's really hard to tell any difference between this thing and the 70s, early 80s, gray and black plaid Mackinac vest I have here. So this gray and black plaid Mackinac vest is like you from that first era right after the family sold their interest in the company. Um, but we know this because it's a lot era, so there's no extension into style numbers, it's lot numbers, it's chest size markings, and it's also got no wool mark, and there was no signs of the wool mark falling off. Um, so even visually looking at this thing compared to the brown vest you just saw, the pockets are the same, the layout's the same, the stitching is the same. There's really no difference as far as I could tell between these two vests, which is pretty impressive 40 years apart and several owners in between. Um, it's more so when you get a look, and again, it's not apples to apples at the shoulder seam. And I think this is just an artifact of the 26 ounce wool as opposed to a 24 ounce wool. I don't think it's anything to do with the quality of the wool, it's more so I think to do just slightly with the density. Um, you know, just showing you the two vests side by side, it's kind of hard to see here while well, the camera goes in and out of focus, but there's really no, you know, there's no length difference. The sizing didn't change over the years from a 42 to a 42. The uh, vests themselves are pretty much 
identical, which is great. You know, very few companies I feel like can say that anymore. So to summarize, new Filson versus old Filson, Mac and all wool products, apples to apples. I uh, don't think you'll be disappointed if you buy a new Filson vest or if you thrift an old Filson vest. The quality's still there. The price is significantly different, but the quality is still there for their made in the USA Mac and all wool items. All right, so let's shift gears. Let's talk about Filson's rugged twill luggage. First introduced by Stan Coles during his ownership period, we're talking about that transition time, obviously, where they shifted from lot numbers to style numbers. The portfolio of products greatly expanded. This was a period where the Filson original briefcase first originated, right? So we're talking about, and I'm showing you right now, the tan Filson 257 original briefcase or their large original briefcase. But what I want to take a second to talk about with their luggage, specifically their rugged twill luggage, goes back to this conversation about suppliers regardless of ownership. So regardless of owner, Filson has done a really strong job of maintaining the suppliers they use to manufacture their products, specifically their made in the USA products. The Rugged Twill luggage is no exception. This bag, the Filson 257 bag that I'm about to show you, was manufactured in 2014. It is of British Milleran Rugged Twill. It has Wicked and Craig bridal leather. It uses Filson branded YKK zippers. You know, it's still the pieces that Filson's been using since Stan Cole's but this bag happens to be from an ownership period where private equity, Bedrock Manufacturing, is the principal owner. So, you know, what does that mean? Is there a departure in quality of this bag from this period in 2014 to a bag I'm about to show you in shortly that's from 2002, from when Stan Coles was the owner of Filson? You know, the answer is again, going to be no, but I'm still going to show you some examples of some of the things that have changed over the years, just so you can see for yourself. Obviously, the shoulder pad changed. Another detail that I noticed changed is the buckles on the shoulder straps. They went from this non-branded to, if we look at my 2017 medium field bag, branded brass buckles. And frankly, that's a nice touch. So, Good for you, Filson. Nice change. The other piece, though, that I will say change, and you can see it there on my medium field bag relative to the older bags, is the pressed-in Filson logo that's on the little tabs that cover the zippers on the original briefcase, my 257 here, and the 256 from 2002 that I'm about to show you. So let's grab the 2002 256 and walk you around this briefcase. Overall, you can see virtually no difference. This thing has got a little bit more patina and the previous original owner, you know, you're about to find out, wrote his name on it in Sharpie. But this bag was really well taken care of. This is an era where they use might as well have the best on the tag. Here's the previous owner's name and when he purchased the bag in 2002. The leather itself, again from Wicked and Craig, great patina. If you're a patina head out there, just showing you the tag. Again, this is August of 2002 when this bag was made, early internet. So we're looking at a bag from an era of Stan Cole's ownership less than 10 years after he released his first rugged twill briefcase and there's no difference in the fabric itself this one's a little older obviously the thickness is the same the tag has changed from might as well have the best to a different filson tag the zippers have changed from a ykk number 10 branded zipper to a filson branded number 10 ykk zipper but Again, the changes are minute and they're mostly aesthetic but not build quality. The shoulder strap changed from, the, from that era to a padded shoulder strap, so this was an unpadded one. 
the brass itself, if you look at that brass on the 2002 bag and you compare that to the 2014 bag, you're not going to find a difference. So one little detail I did notice is the stamped in logos on these leather tabs, slightly more pressed in as opposed to my 2017 medium field bag. So again, I don't know if it's because of the production and how many bags they're creating or what, but it's just an aesthetic thing I noticed. When you look at the leather thickness of the handles and the leather around the bag itself, you know, you'll see there's no difference in leather thickness here. And it's the same high quality leather from Wicked and Craig because again, they lean on the same suppliers regardless of owner. But is today's rugged twill worse than, you know, the Stan Coles era rugged twill luggage? No, it's not. Both bags being made in the USA, two different ownership periods. I think if you buy a made in the USA rugged twill piece of luggage today, you'll be thoroughly happy with it. And you will not be upset that you didn't get a bag from 2002 or the 90s or one has a talon zipper or not. I think you're going to be thoroughly satisfied with the made in the USA luggage still today. And then when you look at Mackinac wool, same case is going to be made. You know, those made in the USA items utilizing Mackinac wool are going to hold up and probably last you the rest of your life if you take care of it, you know. So I hope you liked the video. I hope you learned something. Like the video. Don't subscribe because there's not any more videos to make. This was a one and done, but hopefully you learned something. Cheers.